We have Gumbar Buku back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sleepcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, as long as I'm not reading chat here, Jared. God, they are, <laughs> they are being ornery today. Uh, more so than... More so than... No, no, th th this is this is typical. No, that oh, yeah, when I'm, 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 I'm yeah, you're, who you're am I kidding? This is you're typical. not fooling anyone. <laughs> All right. Well, today is a uh, week 12, 11, 12, 12, week 12 of our sloop picks, Jared. There you yeah. go. The yeah. season's flown by. This season sure has flown by, Jared. Yeah, this is the the penultimate week. This is so it's week so so this is week twelve, which means it's the SEC's bye week then. Yes, Austin, of course, of the regular season, of course. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, this is it. Yeah, the, the, we get no SEC games on the docket this week. Uh, well, that's not true. No, we got Georgia, it, Kentucky. You lie. The doctor we got, lies. Well, am I the doctor now? Um, yeah, Georgia, Kentucky uh, are playing each other, are on the list. But yeah, most of the other SEC teams are uh, playing cupcakes this weekend. We we are we will not be picking Alabama versus Austin P. Who? Oh, I was one step away or one step ahead of you on that one, Zach. I mean, Georgia is playing a cupcake. Damn, Austin! You didn't have yeah. to say it. You didn't have to say it out. It's true. You didn't have to say it out loud. Damn. I mean, Illinois, I mean, Illinois is playing a cupcake. That's that's just inaccurate, <laughs> but funny. <laughs> inaccurate, right, let's, but let's, funny. All right, let's jump into it here. Exactly, speaking Austin. Of Illinois, speaking of Illinois, Illinois heading on over to Michigan. Noon game, ABC, and Michigan is a 17 and a half point favorite. Yes, sir. I'm actually going to go with. I'm actually going to go pick with the um, the Illinois uh, Fighting Birds here. I, I think Illinois will keep it closer. Michigan will still win it um, convincingly, but uh, 17 and a half I think is a little too much for me. So I'll I'll pick I'll pick um, Illinois to at least cover here. I I don't know. Illinois is on a two game losing streak. Um, both games that they were favored in, by the way, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really hard to take Illinois right now. It feels like they're on a slide. Uh, Michigan, on the other hand, feels like they are killing it. They're just, they're, they're they look only on the ground, great on the it's ground and on the defense. Like you have to also give it up for their defense. Um, I would read that Austin, but I don't know how to pronounce it as is tradition. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take Michigan to win and cover. I think, I, I think this is a pick that I'll be like sweating a bit at halftime. Like Michigan will be, Michigan will be up at like at halftime. They'll be like seven, they'll have like a seven point lead at halftime. But then after in, in halftime, they they score like three or four unanswered touchdowns. Because here, here's the thing, like I I really like Illinois' rushing defense here. They're only letting up 85 yards a game, one of the best in the in the country. Now, who have they played? And yeah, that you can definitely have that kind of argument. Who they played and why their their numbers look so good? Okay, yeah, maybe Wyoming, Indiana, Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wisconsin's not. The they're, they're, they're not the Wisconsin we're used to seeing from a run production standpoint. Iowa. Now they did play Minnesota. They did play Minnesota. Uh, but then Nebraska, um, which is a game they. Yeah. Uh, Michigan State. How, how, many, how many rushing yards did they give up specifically, Kyle, against Minnesota, Michigan State and Purdue, I think would be the question. All right, sure. So they gave up 142 rushing yards to Minnesota. Okay. But they only they only let up 38 on the passing. So they let up less than 200 yards to Minnesota. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Sparty. God, the Big Ten is so Big Ten sometimes. uh, Sparty, they let up 112 on 29 carries, so under four yards a carry. Okay. And then then against Purdue, they let up 142 on 33 carries, which is just a little bit more than four. I think Michigan crushes them. All right. All right. Let's see what our um, guest picker has today. Uh, Gangland, right? That is correct, sir. Gangland here says, I have watched very little Illinois this year and a decent amount of the other guys. This is not a good matchup for the guys in blue. Both teams found their bread and butter in running backs that they run like five dollar horse, like a five dollar horse. Both teams. Oh, horse. Ass- I thought that was going somewhere else. <laughs> Both teams suck at passing and have very good defenses. Illinois covers, and I'm going to put hairball on upset watch. I like you, Gangland. I like you. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, next game here, also a nooner. TCU and Baylor. Um, was, didn't somebody have Baylor, who is currently six and four? As a as a um, as one of their playoff um, finalists, someone did. Was it? I feel like that someone has some sort of relationship to the first game we talked about. Yeah, maybe, but I, I don't know. We're we're, we're going to move on either. We're going to move on anyway. TCU is only a two and a half point favorite in this game. A lot like last week, where Texas was favored by like seven and a half points. Austin's going to love this here. And I think quite a few of other um, people in our, uh, <laughs> in our um, discord chat here. Um, ribbit, ribbit, indeed. Uh, give me the horn frogs to cover easily. Yeah. As much crap as I've given TCU for like not winning for lack of a better word, pretty enough for not looking impressive enough during their wins, they have failed to cover only one time this year. Um, they they failed to cover against Oklahoma State. So outside of that, they've covered every game. Um, but that being said, they haven't covered many of these games like, once again, impressively. They, they did crush Oklahoma. That's a thing that happened. And they did... You know, they, they did actually beat the spread pretty hard against Texas as they were uh, expected to lose that game per Vegas. But if we look at some of their other, they, they covered by one and a half points. They covered by three points. They covered by six points. They covered by five points. They covered by two points. They, they, they always feel like a team like on the razor's edge, right? Um, and for what it's worth, Baylor has not been bad against the spread. They're six and four. Um, that, that's nothing, that's nothing terrible. Um, I think what you have in this game are two teams that are not by, by big 12 standards, defensively bad. I think that these are two pretty okay defenses. Um, but I think that TCU has a much better offense. Um, and I, and then I'm not going to let two and a half points scare me off of, off of that so yeah um two and a half point i i think texas or yeah texas christian wins this game give me give me texas christian i the two and a half points is enough to scare me off all right well uh austin wants to know what would the number be what what would you mean what would the number need to be oh to um I'd probably take TCU all the way up to either five and a half or six and a half. Give me TCU up to nine and a half. I, I, I wouldn't take them at nine and a half. I'd take Baylor at nine and a half. Not me. All right. Uh, let's see what uh, Gangland has to say here. Uh, TCU keeps hopping, keeps hopping backs from the depths Oh, I got. I got to reread this. Sorry, TCU keeps hopping back from the depths of hell every week, and eventually that luck will run out. Just not this week. Uh, Dave Orian 
Aranda cannot talk today. Jeez. Had a great year at Baylor last year, but this year has not been it for him. Uh, they have not really had a strong offensive performance, and I don't think they have the firepower to keep up with Max Dugan in the potent blood squirting offense of TCU. TCU covers, and it won't be close. Yes, I know. Rule number six. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to ACC country. Miami and Clemson. Man. Must not be good games here, Jared. No, no, it's <laughs> again like the entire mind. SEC is taking the week off. It's it's a yeah, it's a trash. It's a trash week for football. I'm, I'll say it. Yeah, uh, Clemson is a nineteen and a half point favorite here. Kyle, uh, one of yes, the Jared. worst. Since we, since I've been, I don't, I don't, I don't start looking at these because they don't really mean anything till like mid October, maybe early October. Because, um, mm -hmm. like I said, you need, you need, you need data points for it to actually matter. But since I've started yep. looking, one of the best, or excuse me, one of the worst against the spread records I have seen all year is Miami. Miami is two and eight against the spread this year. Oof. Their only covers. We're against an FCS team and last week against Georgia Tech. Jeez. Th those are their only covers all year. Uh, the Clemson's not, if we're being honest, Clemson's not been gr great against the spread either. They're a 500 football team, but hey, when the other side's two and a half, or excuse me, uh, two and eight, I, what is, anyway, I can't talk today. Um, Clemson's a superior offensive football team in this game, which is not a thing I get to say too often. Uh, that being said, 20 points is a lot. It is a lot. 20 points especially is a lot, especially for a Clemson team that has not been scoring with a, with a great deal of, of regularity this year. Um, but to be, but to be fair, on the other side, too, Miami has struggled at times scoring points, too. Just a couple of weeks ago, they scored three against Florida State. They only scored 14 in four overtimes to Virginia, 21 to Duke, 20 to Virginia Tech. H hasn't been all that, has not been all that great here. So my, fir my first instinct was, uh, yeah, Cle Clemson Clemson should be able to cover this. But as you pointed out, Jared, like Clemson's last games, they put up 31, 14, and 27 points in their past uh, last three games here. That's, that's a that's a great number. But I, you know, you know, I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just I'm gonna pick uh, I'll pick Miami to to cover here. But I, I think they'll barely barely cover. By like it, that, like they'll, they'll lose by like 17 points in ACC play. So we're not counting um, the FCS school or Louisiana Tech. That is a cover. Yes. Miami will cover. They'll lose by 17, which is a cover. Yes. Um, they've only won um, by more than 20 points twice boston college and then once again georgia tech it's amazing how often that that tends to come up um they won those games by 31 and by 28 um this is not a team that's been crushing teams this year it's really really hard to pick them by 20 as, but man the fact that miami's two and eight against the spread this year has me real hesitant to pick them but I will. Um, I'm going to take the Hurricanes, but if you're betting real life money, uh, sit this one out. I, w I would want nothing to do with this. Yeah. Talk right, about your quarterback. Mm, pass. All right. Let's see what Gang Lane says here. I don't want to spend too much time on this. Miami sucks. Jared, do the thing. If not, fuck you. Uh, Clemson is very mid. I wish Dabo 
I wish Dabo a very mid. Each shit comes in, but they will cover, sadly. <laughs> yeah, talk about their quarterback, Jared. <laughs> I don't, I don't have to do I don't have to do anything. And I and I also don't have to do the thing because Gangland already said fuck off or fuck you or whatever it is he said. <laughs> He's already delivered the punishment. Why would I you can't hit me with the stick and then expect me to chase the stick? But Jared, Jared, jo jo join the Discord for only three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and you can harass me in real time. <laughs> for three dollars a month <laughs> bully jared for three dollars a month yeah you can join for free but if you want to harass us some more you can pay three dollars a month for the premium content something like that yeah all right all right moving on to our 330 games uh if you want to listen to the our pick for ohio state maryland game listen to our thursday episode but for right now we will talk about the georgia and kentucky game Played in Kentucky, where Georgia, the Bulldogs, are a 22 and a half point favorite. What you got, Jared? All right. So, no, no against the spread talk on this one. They're both six and four. Uh, that's a total wash, right? Um, Georgia has been demolishing teams lately. Mississippi State by 26. Tennessee, who. Like they, they beat Tennessee by 14 points, but if you watch that game, they demolished them. Florida by 22, Vanderbilt by 55, Auburn by 32. They've been crushing teams, especially on the back half of the season. I mean, mm -hmm. back half, hell, Oregon by 46, South Carolina by 41. They've just been crushing teams this year, except Kent. They had <laughs> problems against Kent and Missouri. But outside of that, <laughs> um, Kentucky, um, they they just lost to Vanderbilt, like, and got destroyed by Tennessee. Got destroyed by ten like, I mean, okay, and barely everyone, beat Missouri, and barely beat Missouri. Well, they have that in common. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess that is a common thing. There's a commonality there. What I'm. OK, guys, everyone, breaking news, breaking news, everybody. Uh, George is better than Kentucky. I'm going to go out on that limb. I'm going to say it. Are they 22 and a half points better? I, I think so. Yeah, uh, I'm going to pick Georgia to win and cover. I agree. I agree. And they. They. Their games just have not been close is what what Jared said here, other than the 14 point was it 14? Yeah, 14 point victory over Tennessee. And then their next closest one was um 22 points to Florida. Um the end of end of October there. Yeah, it's yeah, I, th I think Georgia should have their have their way with Kentucky, especially with Kentucky struggling to uh score points here. So yeah. Give me Georgia. Gangland here says, uh, this is an extension of chicken shit Saturday in the SEC. Kentucky is garbage, even though they have um, a quarterback um, quarterback one in the draft. Uh, maybe he shows everyone why that is his alleged place, but I doubt it. Georgia will just out five star them to death and it'll be called a good win because of the sec 22 and a half is a huge spread and i'm going to say georgia wins this one in a nasty 24 to 3 fashion kentucky covers he's obviously kidding about levis that's a inside joke from the server um or i guess it's 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 a truth if you're if you're was it mel kuyper gangland who who had that was it one of the other guys yes it was mel kuyper Oh, Mel Kiper. Um, yeah, yeah. This this, this game is going to be a slaughter. Um, Georgia will win by however many points they feel like winning. Yeah. All right. 
we will finish our last two picks heading on over to Pac-12 country. We have, we have, um, I don't know if we do have a big 12 one. Forgot about TCU Baylor. Uh, all right. We'll start with, uh, probably one of the prettiest uniformed games you'll see yeah. this weekend. Top USC tier uniform and, game. USC and UCLA eight o'clock kickoff on Fox here. Pretty much a pick them here. Almost a pick them, but yeah. I'm going to treat it like a pick them here. Uh, USC is a one and a half point favorite here. And Jared, when it's this when it's this close here, what is one of our rules here? Uh, never play Navy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's true, but Navy's not not in okay. the discussion here. OK, Jared. OK. Um, when in doubt, pick the quarterback. There you go. Right. Um, by the Which way, number three. <laughs> I really need to emphasize the when in doubt part because both of us and like we can we can give Will Levis crap for being overrated and he is. But who would you rather have? Yes, Levis or Bennett? I know who I want. It's I, I don't like that. Well, I know actually it, Austin, it's kind of poetic. It's the year of the tight end is number 13. It's a little bit poetic, I have to say. Mm, I, I don't know who to pick there. Levis or Bennett? Really? You I, I okay, okay. If you if you put them have equal receivers, equal Bennett? equal uh, equal equal talent. Hold on, equal talent on the offensive line. I may say Levis. I may say yeah, Levis. Absolutely. It's not even close where I'm just talking like, Hey, they're both in the transfer portal. You can only sign one of them. Who do you take? Yeah, probably Levis. I absolutely take Levis. All right. Where are you never, going with this? Never, never accept a transfer from a man whose name is a hat. That's that, 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 that should be 14. Where, where Levis is hella with? overrated. I agree with you, Austin. I agree. He is hella overrated. But Stenson Bennett is Stenson Bennett. Where, where are you going with this regarding the USC and UCLA <laughs> game? Uh, I do see two pretty evenly matched teams. I, I think Kyle said that and, and was absolutely correct. Um, I'm tempted to look at maybe some some recent games uh, uh, for, for commonality standpoint. We all know UCLA just lost Arizona. Uh, they lost by six points. USA beat them by eight points. Um, again, looking for some recent commonalities. They both played Utah uh, at a, in about the same time frame. In that game, UCLA won by 10. USC lost by one. Oh, okay, we're not finding any. We're not finding any gems here, Kyle. We have, no, we have a we have a four we have a four team cluster on that one. Um, <sighs> I I don't know. I'm 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 just gonna pick UCLA because they're the underdog. But man, that doesn't feel like. Oh boy! Oh boy! But it's one and a half points, so I don't even know what that really even gets me. If I'm being I'm honest, with, I'm going with our rule number three. When in doubt, pick the quarterback, and I'll pick uh, pick Caleb Williams here. So I like I'll, UCLA. I'll US. I like UCLA's quarterback a lot too. All right. All right, uh, In fact, Austin's what... about to make the case. And then the bad. <laughs> okay. Um, Caleb Williams. Um, here's what Gangland says. Uh, Caleb Williams is very okay. <laughs> not not really great. USC is also just Oklahoma West campus this year, as well as being transfer U. Did they ever reach the scholarship limit for the year? Question mark. UCLA just dropped a game to Arizona of all teams in what can only be deemed as a classic Pac-12 meltdown. It looks like a very strong conference this year with a lot of one and two lost teams will, will shine bright out in the Rose Bowl this weekend. But I think UCLA dominates the trenches and simply beats USC into submission this weekend. Yes, UCLA big time. There you go. All right. Interesting. 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 And the last game here, this is our Pac-12 after dark game, Jared. 
the first time we've had one of these this year. Mm -hmm. It was the first time and we've done a 1030 in, kickoff. And one of the best games this weekend, too, and it is a 1030 kickoff. Utah and Oregon. Oh, boy, get your... Uh, Get some good sleep before um, before watching this one get here. It's you, listen. <laughs> get that power nap in there somewhere. Here, here's here's what you do. Uh, Eight o'clock is when USC UCLA kicks off. Mm -hmm. Get yourself like a nice forty to sixty minute power nap, like because like right after that, Ohio State wins. What did you almost say? Did anyone else hear an L in there? Did anyone Ooh. else hear that? Okay. Whatever, John. Uh, you have a hard time hearing right now. Just it's just it's, it's just possible. I'm sleep deprived. Um well, well I'm yeah, I'm sleep deprived. Um yeah, when you look at Oregon, when you look at Utah, um what I see are like just two Pac-12 teams who are good they're not great but they're good um i don't think there's a great team in the in the pac-12 this year i don't think that's breaking news either um i don't know i don't i don't i don't overly like either of these teams that much but like if i if i were just to say well, they're penn state does that make sense am i Am I am I far off on that analysis just to say these teams are basically Penn State? Because I think that's about what it is. They're better the than winner. Penn State. I don't know that they are, Austin. The, the I think the only the difference between the only difference between Utah and Penn State is that Utah had to play Ohio State and and Michigan. Uh, well, the they should. The winner of this game uh, most likely will earn, earn the trip to the uh, Pac-12 Conference Championship game. That's that's good to know. And then does the U I assume you know, UCLA USC will all obviously have a uh, a say in how that turns out as well. If Utah wins and they win their last game, they are host. Utah controls its own destiny. There you go. But first, they got to get past Oregon, obviously. So, um, who who do we have here, Kyle? As far as I, I'm I'm not. Again, I'm not in love with either of these teams. I think Oregon Oregon's is really a... good at running the score up against bad teams, which has been their mo since the Chip Kelly days. Um. So a lot of their numbers are thrown off. I, I kind of think I'm going to, I'm going to pick Utah here. I think it's like a 50, 50 football game. And I I have Utah with a three and a half point buffer. I'm going to take it. Give me Utah. Yeah. Oregon's a three and a half point favorite here, but man. Yeah. I, one week, one week, Oregon looks good. Like they, they had a 15 point victory over at UCLA and then they, then they'll turn around and, and lose to Washington another week here. I, I just don't know what to make of Oregon. They, they have they have a lot of talent there, and when they're on a roll, they're they're on a roll. But I think I think they they have a lot to play for. I don't know. Actually, Utah does too. But I I'm just going to go with the more talented team here. I just I just think just think Oregon just has too much offensive power to just just to not lose here so I'll, I'll, I'll go i'll pick oregon to cover here uh what does gangland have to say uh this is another one of the this is another one which oregon dropped a game that they really shouldn't have tie game with 130 on the clock and you go for it for fourth and one on your own 35 i'll take some of that weed they're smoking please <laughs> Uh, Utah has had a very interesting year since dropping a game to Florida with an actual assault rifle for a quarterback. He can only throw passes at a velocity that sh shred up your organs and has no touch. I give them a lot of credit for their battle against USC as 
that was great to see Lincoln Riley sad. I am anticipating Bo Nix to have a classic Bo Nix game. He will shit the bed. Okay. I look forward. To, I look forward to Clark Phillips picking him off two to three times and sitting in my bed like Wolverine with the framed photo. <laughs> Man, what could have been? Take Utah and let's watch the Pac-12 madness and sure. I I agree, Austin. I I think, <laughs> I, I you know I I know we all had a lot of fun you know ripping Bo Nix over the years, but he's been and he's excellent this good. year. He's at almost 2,800 yards, 24 touchdowns, five interceptions. Yeah, it's not a, not a bad year at all. Yep. All right, Kyle, that's our last pick. Um, I think you already said this, but I'll say it again. Um, if you're if you're new here, the seventh game we actually pick on Thursday. That's Ohio State and Maryland. Ohio State's favored by 27 and a half points. Again, we pick that one on the Thursday episode. Um. Outside of that, Kyle, do we have any Ask Sloopcast questions? Um, not for this one. Not no. for this. Not for our, the national games here. No. All right. Um, I want to encourage everyone to check out the Sloopcast.com. I want to encourage everyone to check out our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. It's a uh, tightly moderated Ohio State based community. Come hang out. If you're looking, you know, maybe, maybe you're a little bit tired of Twitter. Maybe you're a little bit tired of the, the toxicity that you find on Twitter or your average college football message board. And you're looking for um, not that. If you're looking for not that. And if you're a bot, Gangland will ban you. Um, so, yeah, just come on over to the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, man, I was... I was really looking. Um, I'm just going to read off just some uh, just some things here that is, was announced this week here. It's just some award finalists here. Uh, CJ Stroud surprise is a um, uh, nope that that was that was a different one. Here we go. Yep, uh, CJ Stroud, a semifinalist for the Davy O'Brien. And um, Johnny Unitas Golden Arms Award, and Cade Stover is a semifinalist for the John Mackey Award. That's that's nice. He won't win it. And sh- I mean, <laughs> that, that's a statistics-based award, and uh, someone else will get it. But it's still a great honor. Uh, some, yep. Some other ones: CJ CJ Stroud and Marvin Harrison Jr. semifinalists for the Walter Camp Player of the Year, and everyone's favorite receiver, uh, Cameron Babb. Semifinalist for the Jason Witten Collegiate Man of the Year. There you and, go. Uh, and then one last one here. Paris Johnson Jr. is yeah. one of the seven semifinalists for the Outland Trophy. Yeah, uh, he is. Uh, he's had an amazing year. He's given up zero sacks. Um, yeah, he's he's had a tremendous year. He's a. Uh, he's real decent chance that uh, he might win that. Austin. Uh, there's also a decent chance he gets picked like top 10 in the draft. Um, yeah, it's uh, he's having a great year, an absolutely great year. Um, that's it. That's it. Kyle. Yes. For Kyle's corner. That's that's it here. Um, mentioned. And um, yesterday's episode that uh Buckeye basketball is three zero, and they are they fin- they finished their first three games, and uh, we'll be heading on over to Maui. They are playing some place, basketball some, someplace someplace warmer. <laughs> uh, Austin wants you to touch on early action this week. We had an impromptu social screen. We watched. Um, we're waiting on the the college football picks. By the way, social screens are things we do in the Discord server. Um, so. Come, come hang out. Um, we did an impromptu social screen, waiting for the college football playoff rankings, watching Michigan State uh, defeat Kentucky. And uh, we we're also watching uh, a, a pair of Maction games. It was, it was a lot yeah, of fun. Like we, we got really, for some reason, I won't say why, Kyle. We got really invested uh, Toledo versus uh, Bowling Green. We got we got kind of invested. Mm-hmm. 
But the better team won. Uh, if you say so. Um, <laughs> all right, Kyle, I think that's it. So uh, with all of th- uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by the Soul Monsters. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Soul Monsters. Mm-hmm.